All right, this is crazy. This is crazy. It's not a Music Monday. This is not a drill. Uh, it's been four years. It's been four years, give or take a couple days, maybe a week, since all this started for me. So let's celebrate the fact that it's been four years. I'm still here, and I'm currently cancer-free. So this is awesome. Let's get to it, guys. I, uh, just see you guys real fast, I mentioned last time that that painting was done by my uh, little sister Anita. I also forgot to mention, hilariously, that both sides of my room have something from her. Over there is a giant llama that she got me for my birthday this year. So, she's just uh, hanging out with me in this room. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I literally can remember the day when all this started. I, so vividly. Um, started out as any normal day at college, uh, UTD, here in Richardson. Um, I'm going to class, uh, I got an hour before, uh, my friend Melissa's with me, we go to get a smoothie. Um, we go to the smoothie shop, I've never been to the smoothie shop before, I, I like smoothies, uh, I, I did at the time, um, I've kind of not liked them for, you know, upcoming obvious reasons, but, uh, they, smoothies, even before this incident, have always messed my stomach up, uh, it's the acidity. Uh, from uh, the orange juice usually I love smoothie like I I wish they didn't destroy my stomach because They don't react well the acidity so there's certain smoothies I can have the more natural ones But the ones like Jamba juice and stuff like that, which was kind of the place we went to those usually don't work well for my stomach um, Oh, okay, usually I think they put milk in it too, and I'm lactose intolerant. So that also doesn't help um, So anyways, Melissa and I get a smoothie she treats you know she pays for it uh, we drive back to campus, we're in the parking garage, I'm sitting next to her, I'm feeling completely fine. Like, literally at that moment, nothing was out of the norm for me. Uh, Melissa's like, I'll see you later, going to class, she gets out of the car, I'm on my phone for a little bit, doot 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 doot, and all of a sudden, I start to get out of the car, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I feel miserable. All of a sudden, literally just standing up out of the car, I felt so bad. I felt so nauseated, I felt the worst headache I ever had. And I never had headaches, and so this is just terrible. I'm like, oh, I was like, that smoothie really messed me up. I thought it had to be that. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, I only have a couple days of class I can miss, so I'm gonna go to class. I, you know, you know, logic. So I go to the class, and I'm literally outside the door of the classroom, and I'm just like, mm, I'm not feeling it. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna be miserable the whole time. I am so weak feeling. I go straight to the bathroom instead, Nothing happens. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm going home to the apartment. Get in my car. Moment I sit down, hurling in my front seat. It was terrible. I, I, I hate the idea of throwing up somewhere that, you know, um, in my car. I really hate that. <laughs> I'm like, if I can make it to the, you know, toilet or the trash can, that's ideal. In my car before I'm home, not great. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, I make it home. I don't know how, because like, in my memory, I remember it being not that easy to drive. Uh, I probably should have called my grandparents to pick me up, but I was miserable. I wanted to get back home. I wanted to lay down. So I make it back to the apartment all safe. Didn't throw up again until, you know, I was good. Um, funny enough, my parents were on their way to Dallas already scheduled something going on. They were already supposed to be here. So I call them. I'm like, hey, just so you know, I can't meet you at the grandparents' house. I'm miserable in bed right now. Uh, and I can't get up. I feel the worst headache. You know, I can barely move. Um, so my parents eventually get to the house. We're all talking. My grandparents show up. It's so much fun. I love when there's a large group of people around me that are trying to diagnose me. I just love that so much, especially when they're family. Um, <laughs> but my uh, family's like, my grandparents are like, we need to take them to the emergency room, you know. So they bring me to this local emergency room and while we're there they do a couple things they check my temperature heart rate all that and they're like yeah you need to leave you need to go to the actual emergency room at a hospital because uh we could do stuff here but it's um not even close to what you need to be done so we go to the hospital and this is the second time i remember throwing up that day after this i probably did throw up more but i don't remember any of it um this time i was on the way to the hospital my parents are driving and i I remember this one mainly because I was wearing my favorite baseball cap. I, I don't drink alcohol that much, but literally it was a Bacardi rum 
baseball cap. I remember buying it with my parents when we were on vacation overseas, and I love this hat so much. Of course, uh, I'm throwing up in the car, and I don't know where to throw up, but my dad's like, in your hat, in your hat. So I, you know, puke in the hat. Uh, unfortunately, uh, then I put it outside the car on the middle of nowhere, and I'm kind of upset with myself because even knowing that I had, you know, uh, thrown up in the hat, I would have been totally okay if we had, like, got it cleaned or blasted it and I would have kept that hat. But, of course, that hat's gone forever now. Um, and you, many would argue probably for good reason. <laughs> but whatever. Um, so, yeah. Skip it ahead. Uh, I was in the hospital for several weeks. Um, I was very out of it for that time. It went very quickly for me, except for that last day. Uh, a lot of hospitals are really not that great about getting you out quickly. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know that. Um, but it was... Uh, it was a blur. I don't remember much of it. Uh, I remember them bringing me for, uh, well, not MRIs, but um, where they took a sample, you know, of uh, the tumor to test and things like that. Um, and then after, I think it was a week or two, I, I'm really bad with timelines, so I apologize uh, if you guys have watched that video recently and you're like, hey, you said this, this. It's been four years. <laughs> A couple weeks go by, and the doctor's like, "Hey, I got the, I got the report. I know what's going on now." Uh, now, uh, you'd probably know what happens. You know, he says some things that aren't necessarily the best things to say and not 100% accurate. But I'm not upset with this doctor because he didn't come into the office to tell us my diagnosis and hurt my parents or make me sad. He literally was giving us all the information that he had and that he understood what the experience he had. So this is why I'm always like, get a second opinion, even a third opinion, you know? Because if someone tells you something earth shattering and depressing, find another doctor, find two doctors to tell you their opinions as well. Because this doctor may be great at some things, but it doesn't mean they're great at this stuff based on experience or etc. So the doctor said I had about a few months to a year to live. Um, I also, Doctors, don't do that, please. Uh, uh, you know, I feel like every time you've given those dates, it just, either it's sooner or later. It's not the date you give it. And I feel like it's terrible to tell someone. No one can tell anybody when they're gonna pass away. Uh, but when you tell them that, oh, you got a year. Obviously, it's been four years, so that wasn't true, you know? Stop telling people when they're gonna pass away. No one knows that, no one, all right? Uh, that's not helpful, I feel like, to the process for them getting better. Um, Anyways, he told us that. He said that the only treatment that would work for me, he said surgery was impossible. Can't do surgery at all. The only thing we could do is give you this backpack that weighs like 20 pounds and you're gonna put a scalp cap on that uh, you shave your head and you just always have to have this thing, magnetic rays in your head and that'll maybe extend your life by a couple months. Um, I really was not interested in doing that because it sounded annoying. Um, and I was like, hey, if that's what I have to do, but I'm not really into it. Uh, so thankfully, weeks pass, we end up at MD Anderson. Uh, we get like one of the greatest surgeons ever, Dr. Sawoya. Uh, he says, there's no reason to be upset with that doctor in Dallas. He was young and we said yes. And he's like, I can do the surgery and get 99% of it, if not 100% of it out. And that uh, metal backpack helmet thing that guy, your doctor was talking about uh, is not that effective and we don't use that treatment here at MD Anderson. Uh, and so this is just complete opposite of what we heard and way more positive than what we heard. This was great. I love MD Anderson for many reasons, but their positivity in their patients is up there for me. Um, they're very good people that work there, um, at least with my experience. So anyways, you guys know the rest. 99% uh, of it was gotten out. I was in surgery for less than 30 minutes. Uh, I got out of the hospital the next day. I mean... It's, you know, ever since then, it's been up and down in terms of I've gotten and re, I've, I've gotten it again, you know, it's come back, it's gone away, it's come back, it's gone away. This is now the longest it's been since I have not had it show up on my scans. It has been almost a year, I believe, and I'm so excited. Uh, I still can't believe four years has gone by. I mean, the way I just told you all that stuff, like I said, I, I can remember so much of those things, you know, and it was four years ago. Um, I don't think I've had a smoothie since then, and uh, neither has Melissa, because uh, she felt really bad about that. And for the first couple weeks, I still thought that it was food poisoning. Um, <laughs> it was not food poisoning. Um, so yeah, 
at the end of the day, I remember getting emotional once during that whole thing. Um, it was probably, it was the day of the diagnosis when the doctor told us all the depressing stuff, the first doctor. And we were at my grandparents, and my parents are talking to my grandparents about it. And I guess I hadn't registered in my head that it was cancer. I guess I just heard growth and stuff like that. And I was like, uh, whatever, that's not, that's not cancer. And as they're talking at the dinner table, I realize it's cancer. I'm like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom and I cry a little bit. Um, hey, nothing wrong with that. You gotta let out the emotions. Be honest with yourself, you know? Um, but I'm gonna be honest. I think I, I, I pretty, I'm pretty. i 99% sure that is the only time I've gotten sad about my diagnosis. Because literally, as I've said before, I, the year before that, and the year before, like for the past five, six years, I had been depressed. And that last year I was suicidal and was just done with the world and life. And so to have been feeling those very heavy things, to have gotten into therapy, gotten medicated for my mental, uh, de my depression and uh, bipolar, and then to be given something as tragic and negative as cancer, you know, I was like, I've already dealt with wanting to hurt myself. I've, I've dealt with all this terrible thoughts to myself for five plus years. I've lived in agony for five years. Why am I gonna let this get to me, you know? I already know what that crap feels like. I'm not doing that again. And that's what? I didn't do it again, you know? This whole time I'm like, listen, I'll get upset about my skin condition, you know? I'll get upset about, you know, any other thing. But I'm not gonna get upset about this cancer stuff because literally, I don't care. It's nothing. And that's how you gotta look at it. It's just something that happens to you in life. Whether it makes your life shorter or there's no impact to your longevity, shouldn't matter because you're just living your life. Now you have this new thing to deal with. That's how I look at it. Hey, I got a scan next week. I'm going to make a video about it. If the cancer's back, the cancer's back. I'm just going to go back to the, you know, chemo. I'm going to do what I've done before and fight it back again. And if it's not back, that's awesome. That's more time and more length of time that I've not had it. But at the end of the day, I'm going to keep living the life I want to live regardless of what this cancer thinks it's doing to me, you know what I mean? Um, it's not worth getting sad about. It's not getting worth getting bummed out about, you know? Um, you're the boss of that cancer, for sure. <laughs> Kick it in the butt. Um, geez. But I, I really, once again, Dr. Sawoya, and uh, I feel so bad, but his, uh, his, his uh, nurse aide that helped him and helped schedule all of our stuff, I feel so bad, I don't remember her name off the top of my head but she was incredible also, I was such a kind woman. Um, and she literally told us, she was like, I'm not going to retire uh, until they come up with a cure for glioblastoma. And she said, I don't care if I'm 100. And she was already older and she was saying this and I was like, wow, like, I mean, you could take that as you will. You could take her as saying, oh, she's just saying that. But I was like, what an amazing person. I mean, you know, to, I, I don't know if I could ever work in the medical field because I have so much compassion for people and I just, I feel like I just get sad all the time, you know, about seeing all these people suffering. And the fact for her to still have that positivity, it just blows my mind. Um, same thing with the doctor that I have here in Dallas. She is so positive. I, she rarely talks about uh, the cancer coming back and the person dying. Um, and if she does talk about it, it is usually because the patient uh, did smart things like not take all their chemo pills or something like that you know it's never you know because of uh, oh well we tried everything and it didn't work you know she's so positive she's like we could beat this we have all this medicine science to back it up um, it's just been great I've been so fortunate to have uh, medical professionals and family and friends all of my life that have been positive that have loved me and that have uh, kept me going and uh, I try to do the same for them. And I try to do the same for you guys. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna keep making these videos, you know? Uh, I love the Music Mondays. I'm so excited to keep doing those. You know, that's just so much fun to me. Um, I'm excited because next week, once again, I have another scan. I'm gonna make a video about that. Uh, I just, I love this channel. I love the connections I can make with people from around the world. Uh, a family from uh, Washington literally messaged me and I had a phone call with them a couple weeks ago. Amazing family. Uh, their, the, the father uh, is going through the uh, same thing as me, glioblastoma. Um, and it was, it was so nice to talk to them. And of course, the, the sad part was like, I was telling them all these things that I'm like, I really wish everyone had the doctors I had, you know, or the information I had. 
because so many people, it seems like they're more afraid because they're not getting all the positivity. Number one thing, I should have put this at the beginning of the video, don't look up the numbers. Don't look up the statistics, Red Bull. Um, don't look up the statistics about glioblastoma. It is a mistake. Don't look them up. They are incorrect because they are majority swinging towards the elderly. Because when you're elderly, your body is not well enough to fight this off. Not saying you can't fight it off, but the more fatalities from GBM are the elderly. So that swings the percentage. When you look at the rate of people passing away, you're like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. The mortality rate's, rate's terrible. You gotta remember, your age, my age, doesn't fit into that spectrum. This swings so far to the elder, that's, you know, people don't understand that when they just look it up. My parents made the mistake of literally looking up the statistics, even though the doctor told them not to, and it just bummed them out. And it's like, you can't do that, because those statistics swing one way, and they don't apply to my age group or my demographic. It can still happen. I could still, you know, have a lower lifespan, but that percentage does not say that about me. That percentage, all that says is, if you're like a 70 and up, it's much harder to beat this thing. Um, again, if I'm if, if I'm saying anything that you're like, this is incorrect, William, tell me in the comments, please. I'd like to, you know, correct myself on these things if I'm wrong, but um, at the end of the day, you just gotta keep being yourself. You just gotta keep smiling, you gotta keep being positive, you know? Uh, this world is insane. So much insane crap happens all the time. I mean, uh, you got wars, you got something called like a double rainbow that's like wrapped around a cloud in China. I mean, th that sounds crazy, but trust me, there's just insane stuff happening all the time. Uh, and you, you, gotta, you gotta zoom in and remember that it's you, you know? Yeah, that stuff's happening right now it's you you've got cancer your partner has cancer your kid has cancer all this stuff you, it's going on your friend has it you're living with that it's gonna be okay it's going to be okay because you've got yourself you've got the community from this channel and you got me and you could beat this cancer is just a chump you know and what do I say about chumps uh, well I'm not gonna say that but <laughs> but what you do is you just wipe it off walk away you're like eh I'm still gonna watch movies you know I'm still gonna have fun I'm still gonna live life it just so happens that now I gotta get MRIs a couple times a year <laughs> well anyways hopefully you like this video I just thought I'd do something for the you know four year anniversary uh, I know I'm a couple days off but it's 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 crazy to think four years it really is um, I just uh, my whole family has been with me this whole time but I my parents, I am so blown away, you know, uh, f just, it's crazy. Um, uh, even my grandparents, I just think it's so funny because literally, I mean, I, what I, I hope my family doesn't watch this and are upset that I didn't mention cousins and uncles and all this stuff, but I want you to know, like, uh, I literally have been to my grandparents' churches a couple times, and every time I go there, I'm a celebrity, and all these people just swore me, and they're like, you're William, you're William? Oh my gosh, you look amazing, you look so good for this and this this. Like the entire church, both of them, they literally all know me because of the prayer requests and all this stuff. And it's just, it's just so crazy how me, of all people, am like reaching your, you guys as an audience, reaching all these people. And I'm like, if I have that reach, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to put the message of happiness, love, and hope out there because you got to. I mean, I feel like that's one of the only ways to beat this, you know, just stay happy, stay positive and uh, enjoy the time you have whether it's one year or a hundred years, you know, uh, enjoy it for every minute because even people without cancer, even people without illnesses don't know when a car is going to hit, you know, when a flood's going to happen. It's just, it's, it's live life in the moment and enjoy the loved ones you have around you. You guys have a good one. Stay positive and happy and I will see you in the next one.